Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoom with Israeli News Live, and Israel has once again targeted Damascus. Uh, the, the suburbs of Damascus have actually been hit. And let me see, I, when I put this together a little bit earlier, I was actually doing a video for Patreon, diving deep into prophecy on a, on a message there. You might want to check that out. I'm sure many of you will be blessed by that. Um, but at any rate there, let me, let me quickly look just to see, though, because I have not um, updated my research on this here with what Israel has done there. Um, yeah, there are three different countries at the same time. Uh, well, that's, uh, let's see, hang on. Um, Israel. Also, I know that Hal Turner is reporting that there is a very good possibility uh, Israel is right now preparing for a major first strike on Lebanon uh, going after Hezbollah. They want to clear that border there. Uh, they're, they're trying to clear out Gaza. Um, let's see, two batches of Israeli missiles targeted the Sayyid Zanid area south of the Syrian capital of Damascus. If I'm not mistaken, it was about a, a dozen Iranian uh, uh, military soldiers were killed in, or, or at least the, their proxies were killed in these strikes inside of Syria. The, uh, the, uh, the uh, Russian uh, S-300 system was engaged. Uh, stopped a lot of the missiles that were incoming, but they were actually hitting residential areas inside of uh, the capital of Damascus. This wasn't the airports like they normally target. This this time was in the city capital, and it was in residential areas there. So Israel really has gotten to the place where they just do not care about the lives of anyone whatsoever. Also, Sweden has been integrated into the alliance. The Baltic Sea became an inter internal NATO sea. Uh, if Russia dares to challenge NATO, Kaliningrad would be neutralized. Uh, that's what Linus uh, Linkovica, however you want to say his name, is uh, uh, bolstering his uh, comments there. Uh, so the situation is heating up on a global scale. Uh, this here also, I just ran into this, uh, was sent to me today. Uh, this guy here, I don't know if he is from uh, Gaza or whatever, but uh, he was showing uh, how this little baby here, child Sahar al-Ba'da uh, inside Kamala Adwan Hospital due to extreme hunger, is the third case in the hospital. Di the child died of hunger, from what they're saying there. Uh, continuing, as you can see on his page there, a lot of bombing. We know that Israel just is just relentless and ruthless in their campaign against the Palestinian people. Uh, all this at the time of saying Hamas is the target. They keep telling the, the Palestinians they have a safe place they can go here, a safe place they can go there. There's no safe place. They're just killing these people. As soon as they go to the safe place, Israel bombs that place as well. I mean, the, the genocide and the ho horribleness of the crimes that are being committed there is just over overwhelming. Um, you know, I don't really say a whole lot about Robert Kennedy, but uh, uh, he did have some interesting thoughts here on the gun violence. And uh, it, it, I don't think that he is for disarming as far as gun like that, not like Biden is. But, uh, but he does bring out some important facts that is being overlooked. And I want to play a little clip of what he says here. Uh, I have some issues with uh, Mr. Kennedy because of the side that he has taken to get the support, but uh, but I guess that's what all politicians do. But some of his policies uh, that are that he's, things that he stands for, I can appreciate that. Listen now. Consequences of gun violence. Where, if any, should there be a limitation in the Second Amendment? I'm not going to do anything during my presidency to take people's guns away. I, I do want to say this, that Gun violence, particularly against children, is unacceptable. And we need to end that. One of the things we also ought to be investigating is why this is happening. Because we've always had abundance of guns in this country in the past 20 years. There's been no uh, uh, per capita increase in the amount of guns we have. And yet these killings, these mass killings, have exploded. And we need to look at, um, you know, at other reasons for that as well, a, a, a potential reason. NIH has not studied 
uh, the etiology or the cause of gun violence for, since 1996. And NIH needs to be studying them to see if there's connections to some of the SSRI and psychiatric drugs people are taking, whether there's connections to video games. There's other countries that have comparable numbers of guns that we have, for example, Switzerland, which has, is comparable, it's not as many, but the last mass shooting they had in Switzerland was 21 years ago. We have them every 21 days. So, so I appreciate that. And what I do appreciate that he did say is in the beginning that in his presidency, he's not going to take away guns from people. That's a politician that um, flat out tells you what he thinks. And if anybody would have an issue with guns, he would be certainly one that would. His father was killed due to gun violence. His uncle, president of the United States, John F. Kennedy, was killed due to gun violence. But he also recognizes that's not the reason why we have an epidemic. It's not because of guns. So that I do appreciate what Mr. Kennedy had to say there. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Be sure to check out our Patreon video. Like I said, going into a very deep teaching over there, and it's one of those ones you really have to have your thinking cap on. Uh, most likely we will make it public, but I haven't really decided for sure as of yet or not which way I'm going to go. It's not a teaching that is um, crucial. But it is going pretty deep, and so I'm a little bit more cautious about how I share that. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, and I'll put the link to Patreon.